Oh, here we go again, y'all rocking the double wide. Welcome to Come On, Get Happy Hour. Woo, it's hot up in the double wide tonight. And this is my homie, Judy Sketch Lewinson from somewhere called Canada. Say hi to everybody, What's up, everybody, everybody. Judy. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> yes, yeah, hot. Woo. How are you doing, Steve? I gotta go jack Steve for my neighbors. <laughs> How hot is it where you are? It's 111. 111, nice. Yeah, it's, it's across it the board. Toast. Nice. Hey, mm. but uh, we may have a blackout, but that's okay. I bought a generator because during the quarantine, my wife was, uh, she was convinced everything was going to shut down. We're going to be off the grid. I had to go get a generator. So I'm just ready to fire that bad boy up. I like Hope I don't that. have to though, because I'm too lazy. <laughs> I like the way she thinks. How you doing? Always be prepared. I'm doing well. Always it's not be prepared. as it's not as hot. It's getting hot up here though, but it's not as hot. Um, we're close to open. It's getting order. hot up her. That yeah. did that make the lineup tonight? It's getting hot in her. Um, as one of the, I don't know. It's not one of my favorites, but uh, I, no, 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 I, I <laughs> I'm excited about prolific. tonight's show. We, we've got some classic. I know you legends. suggested we do a yeah we do a weekly uh, top ten, and uh -huh. you suggested this week as a song lyrics or favorite line mm -hmm. from a song. And again, thanks a lot, Sketch, because. <laughs> You know, it's, it's one thing to do one word, but yeah. when people write like half a paragraph, mm -hmm. and I gotta, I gotta write it out because I'm old school, living a double wide trailer. And Katie, my wife said, you know, you could just copy, you paste. Could just do that on the computer and print it. <laughs> I'm like, don't make me short circuit. I got a system right. here, lady. <laughs> but anyway, oh, we have a good, we have a good top ten. We nice. need a drinking word for tonight. All what right, what could that be? Um, I'm asking you. I'm 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 thinking I'm thinking I'm like Hollywood. All right, let's say Hollywood. Hollywood. Hollywood swinging. Exactly. Well, oh, that's so Hollywood. Not too long ago. Don't get us started. I feel like I could do music top ten every week, but I try to just like with the guests, I try to mix it up. You know, I just try to bring cool people yeah, in and things. you suggest cool people that are yeah rock stars and they're. Their fields and rock stars in Hollywood. Oh, see, look, at <laughs> see? look at that already. Get this party started. Can we get it rolling? <laughs> All right, should we do the top 10? Let's do the top 10. Let's get into it. This week's top 10. Favorite song Favorite? lyrics. Very sophisticated uh, sound machine, but <laughs> I don't know which one's drum roll. We'll, we'll put that, fix that in the mix. <laughs> Let's go. Anyway, this week's top 10 was top 10 uh, line or lyrics from a song that is the baddest of all time that stands out all of these you know a song when your song comes on and you got that one line that you sing louder than anybody else exactly. and it sticks in your brain that's what i was looking for this week all right number 10 Brrr. music is a world within itself yes is that sacrilegious love that both of the kids the little music uh, festival things in school, little concerts, and they sang Sir Duke. So it's pretty cool that my kids know that song. Uh, Colin met Stevie Wonder when he was a baby and oh. cried and turned into oh, me. And I think I remember you had like, like a picture or a video of that. Yeah, and Stevie Wonder's looking at him. I'm like, no, Stevie over here. He's right here. <laughs> but he's like, stop <laughs> you crying. Oh, stop you crying. Why are you crying? Hang on. But now to this day, Colin swears that he knows Stevie Wonder. You know, like this. You know what? Anyway, ha Halle, number Berry, Halle Berry told my nephew that he's very, very cute. My nephew was maybe a year and a half at the time. He still uses that line to this day. That's that's solid right there. I'd be like, uh, speaking to the microphone a little closer when you say that. Like, that would be my ringtone. Right? You're very You're cute, so cute. Halle Berry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number nine. Some people call me the Spanish cowboy. Call, call me the gangster. Uh, yeah. Steve Miller. I'm a smoker. Smoker. Then I took her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one. Space that Cowboy one. Gang. I like the gangster love. That's pretty mm -hmm. that's pretty gangster. Number eight. Um, oh, this one is from uh, a guest we had a few weeks ago, Lou Santini, who's a metalhead. He got a little sappy on this one. He may lose his metal cred. Uh, I miss the joy of rediscovering you. Journey. And the song is faithfully that is a great line and a great song and you know my daughter's name is faith who had a birthday yesterday happy birthday, birthday faith happy birthday i'm faith. gonna say another stevie song happy yeah. birthday to yeah we played that yesterday 
Nice. And I told her at it when she gets married, um, that we're gonna be dancing to that song because we we go see this Journey tribute band every year. Because I'm not paying big bucks to see the other Journey with the fake Steve Bajeri, whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> we, so I'll go see a one at the park for free. Yeah. And we dance to faithfully. So that's nice. And there's some issues. All right, where are we at? Uh, number, number six. Seven. Seven, well, seven. I'm standing. On yeah. Oh no, you're right. You're right. Seven, 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 seven. That's gateway yeah. six. Um, I had some dreams. They were clouds in my coffee. Okay. Oh, they were clouds, clouds in my coffee. coffee. And then Janet Jackson sampled yep. that. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that song's about Warren Beatty. You know that, right? Yes, I did hear about that later. And listen oh, closely. Man, that's that is... Mick Jagger doing the backup vocals. Oh really? Oh wow! All right, cool. listen to it. Yeah, one cloud. Yeah, one Now listen closely. You'll hear it. <laughs> yeah, Number yeah. six, standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. I have no. That's idea. the Eagles. Oh, I was standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. Okay. Okay. The Eagles, but Jackson Brown wrote that line. Mm -hmm. Useless trivia, kids. <laughs> uh, number five, breathe in so I can breathe you. Breathe out so I can breathe you in. Foo Fighters. Okay. Cool. Who are playing about six, five miles from me right now at the Canyon Club tonight, warming up for the Madison Square Garden reopening show. So they're right down the street. Oh, wow. And I need That's cool. I know Taylor, but I was too proud to call him. I haven't spoken to him like <laughs> here in the quarantine. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, how you doing? How the fan? Everybody good? Hey, about those tickets tonight. Um, I, was, <laughs> I was too proud to call him. But. That's all good. Foo Fighters have. I'm too good proud time. to put on a fireman's uh, uniform and pretend like I'm working and bum <laughs> just doing a head check. <laughs> head count. Head <laughs> yeah. count. All right, I'll just mm. have a little clipboard. Okay, number four. Um, mama, Mama always told me not to look into the eyes of the sun. But mama, that's where the fun is. Bruce Springsteen. Cool. That Manford man made it popular, and everyone thinks it says, ribbed up like a douche. No, it's deuce, deuce coop. Okay. Blinded by the light. Blinded like that. by the light. Right. That's it. That so Springsteen song actually reminds wrote that me of, yeah, being a little kid riding a big wheel. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very, very Hollywood. Jam. Number, I know you saw me sneak one. It's hot, I told you. <laughs> Number three, uh, by Miss Judy Sketch Lewinston. Another great suggestion. Well, you know. I mean, ours always end up at the top. top I mean, deal. I don't know how this works out. Good taste, good taste. <laughs> don't worry about a thing. Yep. Because yeah. every little thing going to be all right. I believe it's ting. It is ting, but I, I wrote it out for your for the audience. Jamaican, yeah. So that's yeah. Cause when when we sing is don't worry about a thing, cause every yeah. little thing is gonna be alright. Did the concert, folks. Keep going. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> don't worry. Number two. That is also my karaoke song. So if ever you see me doing karaoke, I do a freestyle in the instrumental right, break. It's pretty do dope. <laughs> when are you coming back to LA? Well. You're telling me it's super hot down there. I think our borders will be opening up very, very soon. So I'm looking for plane tickets as soon as we finish the show. All right, let's hook you up. Let's hook you up. Number two, suggested by moi, one of my favorite lines from the song. Mm -hmm. Wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Mr. Bob Seeger. There you go. That damn <laughs> poet right there. Um, who, who, who always said he regretted writing that line he thought was hokey. That's a badass uh, line. Wish I didn't know now I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, when you're young and dumb, and yeah, yeah. It, it it has some layers in that that line. People think about it. Think about it. Yeah, it's good. Number one this week, y'all. Number one. This is from a very uh, prolific writer. This one line is going to go down in history. Pretty sure it's even going to be on his tombstone. I've alluded to it before uh, by a poet named Mr. Michael Bivens of Belle Biv DeVoe. Never trust a big button a smile. There you go. Number one. <laughs> Never trust a big button, a smile, that girl in front. Yes. <laughs> Number one. Woo. Oh, my gosh. Waxing. I love it. I love All it. All right. Is she on deck? Should we rock it? 
Uh, our first guest is on deck. I just want to let uh, viewers and listeners who are listening on Spotify and any other places that you find fabulous podcasts, because that's where we are also at. If you have a song lyric that you think should have been on the list, be sure to add it in the comments, because we'd love to hear it from you. I am so excited about tonight's show and our first guest that is coming up, who is a Hollywood legend, Hollywood living legend. You said Hollywood twice. Go, 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 go. I did. All right. Um, got two great. Yes. Yeah, let's get into it. All right. We got two great guests tonight. Uh, two, two dear friends of mine. Uh, one's been on the show, one hasn't. One is a badass uh, former BMX champion sponsored by Vans. They need to hook us up, Vans. And now he's a cool ass stuntman killing it. Mr. CJ Stewart is coming up. Mm. And our first guest, you know her from a very iconic Hollywood sitcom called Family Affair. The lovely, talented writer, uh, producer, actress, she voiceover star. She's done a gazillion things. I did some homework. I even sent her a picture of my notes today. It's Kathy. Garver is on the show, aka Yay. Sissy. All right, we ready? We are ready. Let's do it. Very, very lucky to have my dear friend back. She was on the show once again. She's super duper busy, so I appreciate her stopping by. It is the 55th anniversary of a little show called Family Affair, iconic show, the late 60s. Uh, 65th anniversary of another little movie she was in called The Ten Commandments with a guy named Charlie, Charlie Heston, and uh, her 40th wedding anniversary. She's got a couple of like a couple of books. She's got two new books. She's got a, a book that's being re-released in paperback because it was a best-selling uh, hardcover called Surviving Sissy. So many projects going to be here all night. She's got cooking shows and a new movie. I'm out of breath. Please give it up, my friend, Kathy Garver. Hello, hello. Hi, How Kathy. are you, Stevie? Thanks for stopping doing? by again. Yeah, well, my pleasure. It's always fun to see you. <laughs> you make me laugh yes. so much. Well, I'm very silly. I'll try not to say too many bad words tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the, I had kids her the, <laughs> the kids are here. I got to, they're in the, the other room, though, but I'm. Um, Kathy came to see me once and she thought I was a sweet Southern boy. And I got on stage and saying, saying words my mama would not approve of. <laughs> it was like you were two different characters here. This <laughs> we, we drive over and so nice and we're having so much fun. And then you rock out there on the stage, Mr. Hillabilly. It was, it was very funny. <laughs> I know I've, I've got a buddy I do shows with and he's a very Italian, well-known comedian. And he, and he went out with, um, I don't want to say too much, but he went out with someone I know for drinks and, you know, he was interested in her. And then she said, you know, he's very subdued. He's got this character on stage. And I said, well, welcome to the world of stand-up comedy. We, you know, we take whatever reality is and we multiply it by 10, like a reality show, you're bigger than you actually, your personality really is. I mean, I wake up pretty energized anyway. I usually have to dial it back, but I try to keep the bad words to a minimum especially around the kids well, you and know, respectful people. Yeah, you know Bob Donner, the, the comedian? Bob What's Donner was Bob Donner, uh, okay. comedian. And he was really good. And we were in a discussion one time and he says, when you walk on that stage, you are walking in character and it's a whole yeah. different kind of reality. And yeah. it is. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty energetic, but in the morning, <laughs> <laughs> I am... I'm struggling to get my my green tea <laughs> and a little more quiet. But it is, yeah. you know, it's it's you, as you say, multiplied and yeah. and, and and formed and sculpted. Yes. Well, I like to bring the energy of the room up. I always like to oh yeah. Try to energize people. And I think like life is good and life should be crazy and fun and a journey and celebrated. And so I'm silly most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Every minute counts too. You know, Every you have, to have so many, so many minutes. And uh, you, you were reciting my my fifty fifth anniversary of family, then the sixty fifth anniversary of the Ten Commandments. And Stevie, you know, I'm only thirty nine. I know. I was doing the math, and even being a hillbilly, I'm like, that doesn't add up. 
<laughs> it's the magic of Hollywood behind you. Well, you it's, it's magic. You're as old as you feel. And I tell people, if you didn't know how old you are, how old would you be? And I think I would be 12. I would be 18. 18. Yeah. And that's true. It's just, it's just a number. Right. And I think, you know, it really is how you, your, your attitude about life. And like someone the other day has said, oh, it's partly cloudy today. And I said, you mean partly sunny? <laughs> <laughs> right. And I'm not going to do the old adage, the cup is half full. Uh, half yeah, empty. yes, yes. What is that cup there? That looks like some free oh. swag you got on a red carpet or something. <laughs> That's a TV. No, it's my own swag. That's TV dinners. This oh, is, okay. This is one of my new books. And this is also the pilot that we have done. So it's, uh, it's coming on the air. And we hope. Pretty is it? I actually did another. I executive produced this other show called Idle Chat that will de okay. debut uh, September 12th on Retro TV and the Family Channel. And, oh, I love that. Uh, yeah. Susan Anton is the hostess and she uh, brings reunions of uh, people. So like the first one is Happy Days with Henry Winkler oh. and that whole gang. And then there's Love Boat with Fred Grandy and Bernie Capel and that gang. And there's Leave it to Beaver. And so it's idle chat Fred at Grandy. the Hollywood Museum. Oh, that's awesome. Was that the magazine cover you were on recently? Retro TV, you were on uh, a magazine that, cover? That was just a, that's the name of their magazine. Okay. And so, but yeah. Is, is there a channel called Retro TV? Yes. There is uh, Retro TV, and it's uh, Get Get TV Media now. It used to be Lucan Communications, but they've got about like 10 channels. But this is, one of them is actually called Retro TV. And, oh, I love that. And it's like Me TV. It, they're really kind of in the same concept. Yeah. They play classic TV shows, and, and Me TV does classic TV cartoons. So, I love that. I just turned my, my kids on to uh, um, Andy Griffin's show. Because oh, I yeah. love, uh, and everyone had a good message and funny and the characters and Barney Fife. My favorite show of all time, besides Family Affair, of course, is um, the Dick Van Dyke show. And I love that because growing up in Kentucky, I always wanted to be in television and be in Hollywood, but I didn't know how it worked. And it kind of pulled the curtain back and showed you behind the scenes. And I love Dick Van Dyke, you know. Oh, Dick Van Dyke. And, and he's he's still hot. He's still out there. I know. I got I to gotta find him. He lives out here in Calabasas. Are you once, in Calabasas? I'm, you know where I am. No, no, I'm in yeah, you know, close. Yeah, but you, you know that I bought the house that I was renting in, in Bell Canyon. I, I think Bell I Canyon. did hear that. Yes, I, I bought that house. Mickey Dolenz lives here. And, oh, and uh, no, I'm not going to say that name because it got us in trouble last time. So I'm not going to say Alyssa Milano. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, then I know with, we've, uh, we've been to you with my daughter. Should I mention what my daughter got for her 11th birthday yesterday? Um, yes. A Red Ryder BB gun. Oh, really? <laughs> Tell Liz Milano, she sees my daughter in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in Bill Canyon yesterday. I go there very, you know, you're two miles from me, so. You're kidding. You should have stopped by. We, we off the air. Tell me where you are now. Hunt yeah. the horn or something. I won't, yeah. I won't just show up at your doorstep, but, uh, well, you know. Come on in. Have a beer. <laughs> You see a Trans Am with the T-tops off, you're pretty sure it's going to be me. <laughs> I thought I heard something yesterday. Someone doing donuts? Up the the uh, mountains and the hills. That was, that was probably me. So yeah. I just showed the picture. I don't know if you saw it earlier, and we've talked about it before, but the first time you and I met, and we were eating, and you said how you were discovered by Cecil B. DeMille. I know that's a famous Hollywood story by now, and you've told it nine million times. But for the you can you can shorten it if you want. But this is you and Charlton Heston, and that picture right there is iconic. Yeah, um, I could tell it nine million and one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just hired as an extra amid hordes and hordes and extra. Oh, I just have a life, a magazine that someone sent me with one of the pictures of all those people. Now, see, I'm already embroidering it. It's going to be longer, but um, I was just supposed to be in the exited scene, and I hear this big voice call out, Joel, let that little girl's face get in the camera. And I said, who is that? Is that God? 
as we were, you know, <laughs> doing the Ten Commandments. It wasn't yeah. God. It was, as you say, Cecil B. DeMille came down after we shot the scene on this big crane. And I talked to him and uh, the associate producer came up and said, well, you're going to be in this movie longer. And so he wrote scenes into the movie. And that was one of them with Charlton Huston, Charlton Huston and me. And uh, so that uh, was really the start to my career. It, I was off on a, my biblical route. That's amazing. I, you know, How was Charlton? Charlton I'm sorry? Was when the camera wasn't rolling, did he still talk like Moses? He did. He was very <laughs> much in character. He was a very <laughs> imposing character. Was he? <laughs> and here I am this big and he is like this. So another godlike character that, that was uh, on the set. Someone posted a picture yesterday of him with Planet of the Apes when he was kissing the ape. And I forgot how disturbing that was as a kid. But I actually have an action figure. This is my, my son's room, actually. And I have a one of the Planet of the Apes action figure when I was a kid up there somewhere. But, you know, yeah, I, no, I love all great. the... You know, I did the, um, the animated series Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends. And I yes. played the voice of Firestar. Yes. So, this year they brought out an action figure and do I have her here? She's not up here right now, but well, here was like a little card, you know, and this will remind you of that's this amazing my character. And oh, I have pictures also, but anyway, they have this darling uh, character, uh, six inch action figure, but it's rather disturbing because her head comes off and it's interchangeable with another head. And huh? lose my arms. So I, I don't know why they added it, other than you know, yeah. give you some action, and you can yeah, yeah. be <laughs> assimilated into Firestar. Yeah, not the Jones. I know. I used to, you know, put you know firecrackers under my GI Joes, and <laughs> I had three sisters with Barbies, and I would just torture them and steal Barbie's dream house and the pink Corvette, and they were like, you know. You're but, a bad um, boy. Bad boy. Steve. No, I was not. Bad boy. Only on stage. I only say bad boys on stage. You well, have a good heart. Didn't they have a Mrs. Beasley doll? My sister did. And, you know, my sister had a sister pass away this past year. And when I went back to Kentucky, I sent you a picture. We were cleaning out her stuff and she had her Mrs. Beasley doll. Yeah. Right there. That was so nice. And you still do the, the signing sometimes and people, because that was such a memorable part. It's like the Brady Bunch. People remember that forever and ever. And I, I saw a picture you posted. I was looking at your pictures yesterday and you had a picture of you and Christopher Knight. And I don't know if you were getting your uh, star on the Walk of Fame in Palm Springs or something. Um, I have done that, but I think, I don't know which picture this was. Chris and I did a play in Palm Springs. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Dinner at Five. And that was also with Fred Grandy from The Love Boat. And oh, yeah. We, we had a wonderful time. That was great. Fred, but was Fred the bartender? Um, Fred Grandy, yeah. Uh, no, that was that, no, that was, was no. He was. Who was Isaac the bartender? Yeah, that was Isaac was oh, the Gopher. bartender. He yeah. was Gopher. Yes, yes. Yeah. Gopher, yeah. yes. Yeah. Where Christopher's ex-wife, Christopher's ex-wife, Adrian, Adrian Curry, introduced me in my Rockstars of Comedy uh, concert film. She comes out, and she was still Mrs. Mrs. Brady at the time. She was still Mrs. Knight. <laughs> Mrs. Knight. <laughs> well, his present life, the wife, Kara, is just adorable. She is very, yeah. very, very sweet. And one of the best things I think that that both of them have have uh, discovered and work nice. with. They're great. And you know, he makes furniture. It was so funny. I was Does he? I yeah, I was in Palm Springs and I was doing a, a show there. And I was staying with some friends of mine, Paul Del Cito and and his husband, Steve Roach. And I said, oh, I really like your bartender, uh, your your bar stools. And he says, those are from Chris. Those are Chris Knight's bar stools. So he has a whole design company. And wow. he makes primarily tables and, and chairs. It's like a Wayfair type thing, yeah. like that that company. But yeah, Chris Knight's furniture. I look Very that up. talented fella. Very cool, very cool. I yeah. was at a party maybe, maybe a year and a half, right before the quarantine, I was at a party of a friends and uh, Cindy Brady was there. I don't know her Susan name Olson. in real life. Susan Olson. Susan Olson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Really I want to take a picture, but I don't want to. 
Yeah, well, I'm going to do um, this nostalgia convention in Maryland, mid mid Atlantic uh, nostalgia convention, and uh, Tony Dow and Jerry Mathers are going to be there, and uh, oh, Haley awesome. Mills and Haley's sister Juliet Mills and and me, and so it's nostalgia is is wonderful, I think, in a way, and everyone is yeah. wonderful. And uh, yeah. so it's it's nice to have like a little bit of comfort, a little bite of comfort of nostalgia. Yeah, well, you meant so much, and you still do to so many so many people. And um, so you've had you co-wrote Child Stars. Where are they now? Right. That's right. And who did that you have is- in that? I got to get a copy of that. That's very cool. That's right up my alley. I love that. So yeah, the Olsen twins. Cool. Funny, I was just telling my my daughter yesterday that the Olsen twins were were two the baby on the show was was two and i was friends with john stamos back in the day he may not talk to me anymore if he heard heard me talk the language i use on stage but um (laughs) but i got my niece uh the olsen twins headshot but it was both of them and it really it confused her because she didn't know there was it was two how old is she now she's 11 10 oh my daughter's 11 but my niece you know 25 years ago Oh, oh, yeah, right. I got her the autograph when Full House was on. Oh, yeah. Well, that's like Haley Mills when she was in The Parent Trap. And uh, in order to be twins, she would have to have yes. a stand in, you know, from the back shots and, and yeah. things. And like Patty Duke, I just did, I, you know, I've done a whole bunch of audiobooks. I've done like about 80 audiobooks. Wow. And one of the last ones I did was In the Presence of Greatness. And that was all okay. about Patty Duke. And wow. was strange when she had the Patty Duke show, I did about six episodes as her friend, Monica. So I'd did known you? her since then. And we stayed friends. She, as a matter of fact, wrote the, the foreword to this book, to my survival wow, okay. book. So when I'm doing the audio recording, it's like, I am, she's just like right there. And I get yeah. her voice and her presence and the energy. And it was, it was really, really interesting. Bill Jankowski was the author of the book and he had interviewed her. And so it's a whole compilation of her talking and what happened to her. Just recently on Facebook, did you see the, the picture of Patty and um, Helen Keller? No. It's a, it's a wonderful picture when really? Patty was doing, you know, the miracle worker. And, yeah. and that was like with Helen Keller. And so she went to visit Helen Keller, the real Helen Keller. And that it's it's really a oh, powerful uh, photo. I gotta see that. How many kids did Patty Duke have? Let's see. She had Sean yeah. Ashton. Um, I think it's just Sean. I now was was John Ashton? Did he adopt Sean? I heard like he was a was. I don't know. Is, yeah. He did. Okay. All right. So John of the Adams family, and funny because my kids are into this show, Stranger Things now. Oh, yeah. And Sean was on the sh- Sean was on the show, and I said, "That's Rudy," and they're like, "Huh?" I go, "That's Rudy, that's Sean Aston," because they just saw Rudy and they fell in love with Rudy. Yeah, but, that was a, uh, that was a wonderful movie. It was, and I love the whole history of of Hollywood. You know, I love retro stuff, and yeah. and I love you. And you got nine. You you're the busiest person I know. So I appreciate you stopping by here and slumming well, it for a night. I'd always stop by for his DVD. Absolutely, I appreciate you. You're awesome. So what do you got coming up here, Miss Kathy Garver? Well, for 2021, the celebration of all those anniversaries, and I'm bringing out the TV Dinners TV Cookbook, which is going along with the show, and the Surviving Sissy sold so well in hardback that it's the paperback now. And also to help celebrate Family Affair, I have the Family Affair Scrapbook. And so oh, very cool. assemblage of like all this memorabilia, you know, things were just coming in. Now it's, you know, so easy to see all the other things that are made for a particular show. But mm-hmm. we just have, it just started like in the 60s. But so there's the, the lunchbox and, and the view master and paper dolls and cutout dolls and That's all awesome. kinds of memorabilia that, are extant from family affair and so wow. i was going to do like a little exhibit but i'm going to do a thing at the hollywood museum and you come you know bring your mind okay you like it it will be in september that's when the show actually debuted 
I would love it. I've got my, my, my kids are hooked on going to vintage stores with me and my mother-in-law lives in Ventura. So we always go to main street and we have our favorite toy stores and I look for vintage lunch boxes and evil Knievel stuff, you know, and uh, <laughs> I'm very retro, you know, that Kathy girl. Anyway, I got, I got a new book coming out and it's all formatted. It's ready to go. I'd be honored if maybe I'd get you to say a little blurb or something on there. You bet. Super. What's it about? Well, it's called Chronicles of a Hollywood Hillbilly. It's just funny, silly stories, my nonsense. Well, your first one was wonderful. Your thank you one. so much. Thank you. Yeah. And so are you, all of yours. And thank you again. I can ask you one more question is, I say hell yeah. What was your hell yeah moment? But I don't like to swear in front of you. So what was your heck yeah moment? What was your favorite? What was your biggest moment that's dearest to your heart of your Hollywood career? I would say getting family affair. I was okay. I was at UCLA and I was in the sorority and my agent called and she says, well, I just want to let you know that you have a new series. They they love you. They just say never wear that wig again and never wear that dress. And I said, never <laughs> again. I'm wearing a clothes. Awesome. So that, was, that was really that was really a fun, fun, fun moment. And are you going to tell everybody where they can get all my awesome books? Yes, please. You're going to tell them that. Well, let me tell all the audience where you can get all my awesome books is at my awesome website. Which I love your website. I was on it last night. <laughs> very strangely called KathyGarver.com. I mean, so creative. K -A -T -T -Y. How'd you get that name? G A R V E R. Thanks, mom. Thanks, dad. So, KathyGarver.com. They're all on Amazon. And if you go to my website, I will autograph them. But also on my website is like my store with candles, sissy candles, sissy spray, yeah. sissy lotion, and you can get them all there. The sissy candles that I that my stepson makes that are a really really nice. And there's a fire star candle now too. That's really hot. You sign all of those, Kathy. Yeah. I do. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Kathy you have to like me on Facebook, if you will. Yeah. If you don't like me, <laughs> you can <stay>. Love her. <laughs> yeah. Love What's me. not the light? <laughs> love me on Facebook. Why not? This lady's energy lights up the room. Her, she wakes up smiling every day. <laughs> thank, so thank you for stopping by, Kathy Garver. Thank you, Stevie D. You're awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you. See you soon. How cool is that, y'all? Miss Kathy Garver dropping by, slumming it in the double wide. Coming up next, I've been bugging this guy. He's my homie. He's my brother from another mother. I've been bugging him for a while to get on here. But he's a little busy. He's doing all these stunts and these Hollywood movies now. He's big time. But uh, he's a BMX legend. He was sponsored by Vans, so we need to hook up, hook up a homie with some Vans in the double <laughs> wide. But this is this is how bad this dude is right here. And he's just playing. He's just playing. That even that, that wasn't even serious. <laughs> we'll talk about this right here. He's wrecking cars and getting paid for it. Give it up for my man, Mr. C.J. Stewart. What's up, homie? Thank you, Stevie. Thank you. For, thanks for having me, man. I'm glad I could finally get in here. What's up, brother? What's that behind you? Does that say Ventura? That says Ventura, man. I bump into my man up in Ventura sometimes. We do. We do. I missed <laughs> you last time. I ran into your wife, and I, I never, never got to see you the last time. I know you're probably doing a wheelie down Main, Main Street or something. This <laughs> <laughs> dude posts videos of him like doing wheelies down Main Street. <laughs> like, Daddy, the kids are like, Daddy, he does a way better wheelie than you. I'm like, oh, don't look at that. Don't look at that. Keep going. <laughs> you can't see the wires holding him up right there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. False stunts. <laughs> I love Ventura because the first time I went to Ventura, I'm walking down Main Street and I look over the store and I thought it said Kentucky on this shirt. And I get closer, it was a K. It said Ventucky. Yep. I'm like, oh, that's my jam right there. It was the store Iron, Iron and Resin. Yes. And, absolutely. and I was like, oh, shit. I went in there like, yeah, they call us Ventucky, like Kentucky by the, by the sea. It's like <laughs> laid back. I'm like, yeah. okay, I love this place. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Good vibes going on here. Yeah. So are you from Ventura? Yeah, I was, I was born in Ventura. Um, but then I grew up in Bakersfield. I grew up in Bakersfield. I think I moved to Bakersfield when I was four or five. So okay. I finally, finally got back to Ventura though now, and I'm not going anywhere. So your folks are up there, right? Yeah. Yeah. My, my folks both retired probably about seven years ago. 
and uh, they bought a house back here. So when I was living in LA, I was coming up to Ventura all the time. And every time I was up here, it just felt like home. And finally yeah. I was able to be like, you know what? I think I'm established enough in my business now to where I can move up there and live there and just travel to LA when I need to. So yeah. that's what I did, man. And I haven't been happier. Nice. Uh, CJ and I go back to a good, good buddy of ours. Brando was a good friend of ours that passed away. And then, and then he and I bonded and uh, yeah, good, good people, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now I grew up a little BMX punk and, and you were a legend in, in the game. And can you talk about like your, your background in, in that world and with vans and how that parlayed into your, your stunt world? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I raced professionally for uh, probably about 10 years. Um, my main sponsor was vans and uh, traveled pretty much all over the United States with vans and, and doing all kinds of races and fun events with them. And then, um, and then one day, one of my sponsors, my, uh, another one of my sponsors um, named Sonic Speedworks, they actually made like number plates and stuff for racing. Um, he did a bunch of stunt stuff. And I always told him, you know, like, hey, dude, I really want to get into the stunt game. But uh, me and him had a real similar look. We both had dreadlocks like down to our shoulders. We we're basically like the same complexion. So I think he didn't want to get me in for a long yeah. time. <laughs> but uh, it, some it's competition. Yeah, exactly. So something <laughs> finally came up for a guy with a shaved head and he didn't want to shave his dreads off. So he referred me for it. And one of the top stunt coordinators from the game just called me out of the blue one day and was like, Hey, I got your number from so-and-so. Um, are you interested in start doing this? I was like, yeah, man, like, what do I got to do? So they were like, yeah, come down and meet us tomorrow. So I went down and met them and they're just like, yeah, you're absolutely perfect, but you got to cut your hair. And I was like, Oh man, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I want to cut my hair, dude. And yeah. I'll, I will never forget this. The guy looked at me and he goes, son, hair grows, money doesn't. And I go, do you have the clippers right now? Let's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my way into the game. And I, I never looked back, man. I just uh, been, been grinding ever since and just, just trying to make it happen. And I can see like you progress. I see your different levels of driving skills and then other things. But I, I, you just made me think of uh when you did the thing on the treadmill and they asked you, could you do that? And you're like, absolutely. You can ride a bike on the treadmill. You're like, yeah, of course. You said you had never done it before. And you're like bunny hop on the tread. Did you hold on and start or did you bunny hop and the treadmill was already going? The treadmill was already going. So I had to bunny hop up onto it while it was going and then act like I was gotcha. pedaling. And then they wanted me to crash at the end. So it was basically like, just grab the brake and let the treadmill launch you off. Oof. The <laughs> Did you have a, a pad or anything you fell on? No, no. Straight really? To the ground, straight to the ground. They're like, that's pretty good. Can you fall harder? Can you do a backflip on the way back? Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you start out doing primarily bike stunts? Uh, no, it's, it's funny. Um, I didn't do a bike stunt for probably my first five years in the stunt game. Um, wow. It was just basically other small little things like just be, getting beat up or jumping over fences or just, just easy little stuff, man, at first. And then, um, and then I finally got to do a few little bike things, but I could still probably count on both hands how many bike things I've done in the business. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I got these skills. Does this gangster ride a bike? Cause I can uh, <laughs> yeah. jump off this car and be like a cross up. <laughs> I can do some of that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can do this coming off the back of a big red truck. If you want me to, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's funny because I didn't even plan this, but I'm almost done with a, a book. I've read several books on stuntmen. I, wrote, I read Hal Needham's. Uh, he wrote Smokey and the Bandit. He, he wrote Absolutely. that script and he, he was a stuntman that said, yep. I envisioned this movie, this badass car movie. And I'm reading another one. Now. I don't even know the name of the guy because when you read one book on one subject, it goes, you may also like. And I go, OK. And I just go over and buy the next book. So I'm reading this other. And this is like an old school cat. that was like Mickey Rooney and. He was a short guy, so he, he he did stunts on like a lot of sh westerns in the '60s, like Bonanza and all these cowboy shoot 'em up things. But he was like five four, so okay. he was always a double as a, for a woman or a kid. Yep. Mm -hmm. But it, it's crazy, like how Needham talks about stuff that he invented, like you know, like the, the certain kind of harness to pull you off when you get shot off a horse, and because the Absolutely. projection of the bullet will blow you backwards, you don't fall off. It like blows your ass off the horse. So. For sure. That's and, uh, one of the biggest legends in the game right there, for sure. Really? Yeah. Is he still alive? 
You know, that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't um, think he is. Yeah, it seems like maybe he died recently. I don't know. We need to look that up. But um, I saw what you posted years ago. Yeah, you did your first car rollover. I showed this to my son today. I did. I did. How was that? It was gnarly. So that was uh, that was my first first job back after the the pandemic. Um, so we were shut down for like six months and didn't work for six months. And um, finally, stuff started to pick up again. And I got a call, and um, my friend actually asked me, "Hey, um, do you know anybody that can roll this car?" I'm like, "What do you mean? Do I know anybody? <laughs> You're looking at him, dude. Like, I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, but I know that you've never done it before. I was like, I know I've never done it before, but I'm ready to do it. Let's like, let's do it." And so he's like, okay, well, let me make some phone calls and this and that, like you're first on my list. And sure enough, it came, came to life, man. And, um, it was one of the gnarliest things I've ever done in my life for sure. Did you have the, uh, the, the helmet that was a harness also in your neck? Oh yeah. I had, I had full, I had a full face helmet. I had a harness on, um, I was harnessed into the seat as tight as I could be. Um, and then I had, basically it was an air cannon set up in, in my passenger seat. So I had a gun or a, a button taped to my hand. Like to detonate? Yeah. To detonate it. The, the cannon sitting in the passenger seat. So I had to get the car up to like 55 miles an hour. I had a Oof. hydraulic e-brake in there. So I pulled the e-brake, get the car just a little bit sideways and hit that button. And then it's just boom. And just takes Shh. off flipping. So you didn't do the, the ramp thing and, yeah, like there's no, no no ramp. It was really? All the cannon. The cannon just shoots wow. out the bottom of the Holy car shit. and flips it. Wow. Yeah. Did you, did you get air? Oh, I got plenty of air. I probably flew. The car probably flew about 50 feet and landed on the roof and then started rolling. Oh, yeah, yeah. I thought you just rolled over like once. I thought you just like, <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> wow. You went for it, man. It was, it was crazy for sure. What's, what's that going to be in? Uh, that was for a music video. It's a, a Kendrick Lamar music video. I don't know if it's came out yet. It should be out, but I haven't seen it come out yet. Well, I hope you got big budget movie money in this music video. It, it spent was, most of the budget on you. Yeah, you know what? It, I, I got a pretty good paycheck, but on that one, I would have done it for free just to have the experience for it. Really? Because <laughs> now that I've done it, I, I know that I can do it. And a lot of other people know that I can do it. So that's on your resume now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it won't be the last time that I do it for sure. That's what a lot of the, these books I read on, on the Sun Men say, once you, you know, you do one thing and if it stands out like that, like, oh, that's, that's the guy. That's absolutely. the rollover guy right there. Yeah, absolutely. You haven't even seen him on a bike yet. Yeah. I would have been sure I go on Main Street on a Saturday and have a beer in one hand and doing a wheelie in the. <laughs> By the way, the drinking game tonight with the word was Hollywood. You're going to be a Hollywood legend, my friend. Yeah. yeah. What is that you're drinking? I got a little Captain and Coke. All right. All right. Yeah. What, what do you got? Here's for our homie Brando right here. Absolutely. Cheers to that. Yeah. I would I would pour a drink, but this is my son's keyboard and my jack. <laughs> short circuit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Colin mad at you, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Colin could take me out. Yeah. <laughs> That boy's getting big, man. He is, man. He is. I got to step up my jujitsu game. Man, it's so crazy. I mean, I remember. There's things I can't show him yet. Yeah, for sure. Man, it's so crazy because I remember when you didn't even have any kids, man. And now look at them. They're all grown and stuff. It's so nuts, man. I know. He's 12. He's like, Daddy, I'm 16. Can I get a Trans Am? I'm like, hey, slow your roll, buddy. (laughs) You're getting a Pinto. You're getting a scooter. That's what you're getting. <laughs> He's like, I get your a Huffy. Gym, right, Dad? <laughs> you're going to start on the Huffy. Then you're going to go to a Schwinn, Mongoose. Red. You're going to go up. You start on a Huffy, bro. And don't hit any sweet jumps. You'll break the frame on a cheap-ass Huffy. Yeah. <laughs> what was your first bike? My first bike was a Huffy. Was it? Yeah, absolutely. Mine absolutely. too, dude. Mine too. Oh, Got to yeah. get that paper out and buy my bike one at a time. One. The grips and the pedals and the sprocket and the, yeah, we put it together. Yeah, you know, I had I had all the rich friends and stuff that had all these nice bikes and stuff, but I wasn't one of them. Well, dude, how, how did you, how is it different? Like you're going over the jumps with these big ass tires. I haven't tried the sweet jumps with these, these tires like this. Yeah. What's that called? 
Uh, those, I mean, that's just a fatter street tire. I mean, it's that one's probably, I'm trying to think, I think those are like 2.125s or something, but, um, on, at a skate park, you ride your tires like super inflated. So you ride them at like almost like a hundred PSI. Really? Yeah. Does it add weight to the bike? I mean, is it? No, not at all. So what's the average weight of say a bike like that? What would you say? Uh, probably 20 to 25 pounds. Yeah. That used to be our jam back in the day. Weigh in your bike. Absolutely. Man. <laughs> yeah. My race bikes back in the day, I used to have those things so light. It was yeah. insane. Oh, here's, I got a couple badass pictures of you. I don't know if we can fly these in, but. Oh but yeah. A, you were parallel to the earth, bro. That's uh that's up at snow summit up in big bear. And, that is uh, sick. That's I think where I'm going tomorrow actually. Wow. Yeah. So you're keeping up your BMX game too, huh? Um, not so much BMX anymore, but more just uh more mountain bikes now. No, and can... a little a little bit of BMX every once in a while just to try to keep the skills up. Sweet jumps. Yeah, <laughs> you know. How about the sweet jumps. Yeah, that's um that's at a the Sapwee bike park in Thousand Oaks. That's a public bike park that they have now. I really? Have in every city. Yeah, it's about 30 minutes from my house. So okay. I go there quite a bit. Thousand Oaks. Okay, let me know, man. I like to, I like to hit it. Absolutely. Because uh, we're, we're about halfway. Well, Thousand Oaks isn't that far. It's maybe 15 minutes from me. Oh, yeah. We're like edge of Calabasas here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Super close, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, brother. So I saw you playing a gangster. You had a really good speaking role. You posted something. It was like someone's trying to sniper your ass. What was that? Yeah, that was uh, for the TV show SWAT here recently, man. It was uh, like a little co-starring role that I was actually surprised I got. <laughs> but, That's great, uh, man. Yeah, it ended up being pretty cool, man. So Shamar was, I can do this all day. <laughs> yeah, Shamar Moore was chasing me around the uh, Lake Castaic and then uh, – I tried shooting him a couple times, but that didn't go so well, and uh, they got the best of me. <laughs> they got you. Spoiler hey, alert! Cool. <laughs> Shamar's cool, man. Shamar's a good guy. He did a promo for me. He said, uh, "In case you didn't know, now you know." Stevie D rocks. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Little sound bite he did for me. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. He seems like a super cool dude. I worked with him a couple times now, and uh, one of my good friends is a stunt double, and he says nothing but good things about Shamar. So oh, very cool, man. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you, brother. So um, I usually ask my guests if you have a hell yeah moment. It was probably your recent rollover, huh? What was your favorite moment in your career so far? That um, I would have to say that that was probably one of them. Um, the other one would probably be double. I would double Samuel L. Jackson in uh, Captain Marvel and did all his stunt driving in the big car chase on, on Captain Marvel. And um, wow. that was just a huge moment because obviously I don't look anything like Samuel L. Jackson, so they could have got anybody else to do it. <laughs> um, but his his actual stunt double was like, yo, I think we should bring CJ in to make this look better. And that just kind of blew me away because wow. the stunt double that he has can drive already. So like, for him to say like, yo, we need to bring CJ in. Like that was just like a, that was more like a holy shit moment. I guess. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> like an FEL moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure being on this show is like number three. It should be like number three on the list. Number two, I think. Number two. <laughs> it's, it's, it's right up there with that, you know? <laughs> you're Hollywood. You're, you're a legend in the making, my friend. Hey, I appreciate it, Stevie. Definitely. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you, man. And uh, I'll give you a heads up next time. We're actually we're going to be up there Sunday, but it's it's Father's Day. I don't know if we'll make it to the vintage stores or Main Street, but gotcha. let's hook up soon. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, All right, buddy. Good to see you, my man. Always good to see you, Stevie. Tell them where they can find you, brother. Tell them where they can find you, real quick. Uh, Instagram, CJ Stunts. That's uh that's my main thing. I don't really do any of the other social media stuff. Instagram is pretty much where you can find me. This is Jam. Check out those videos on there. And- He's, he's a wild man. He's doing his thing up there. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Well, go, to, go to Ventura on Main Street. If you see a guy going by in a willy holding a beer, that's him. Yeah, with, with the big afro headed down there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't miss me. And now he's at the status where he doesn't cut his afro anymore. He's... <laughs> that's actually true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, CJ. Good seeing you, my man. Right on, Stevie. Always All right, brother. Thanks for stopping by, buddy. I said hello. 
Love you. Okay, buddy. Appreciate you, man. Peace. See you, buddy. Excellent. Thank you so much, CJ. Thank you. Good times. Yes. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Have a good one, Stevie. Thank you, brother. You too. All right. Good times. Yeah. All right. We're going to close it out. Mm -hmm. Yep. We will do the closing in five, four, three. That was a solid show, don't you think, Sketch? That was so much fun. I love the Hollywood legends. I love from the past and the future, just making, you know, it, it was a great That was cool. The CJ's stars on the rise. Yeah. Doing his thing. Kathy's been in the game for a long time, done a million projects, and I, I like to mix up our lineup like that. Mm -hmm. Always keeping it happy over here. And the come on, keeping it happy, happy and hour. happy. You see the energy of those people, man. Those are good people to That's be around. Nice. Surround yourself with positive people like that. Exactly. It's the All right, everybody. Way. Thank you for watching. Come on. What's up? It's the Hollywood it's way. Good? Yes. You better have a drink. See, I can't see what you're drinking. I think you're cheating. You can. Yeah. Go, 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 go. I'm drinking. It's all good. It's funny. I'm in Colin's room and Colin has a little refrigerator now. Why do you need a refrigerator on a computer? Desk? All right. So anyway, that was awesome. Tell them something good, Sketch. Tell them uh, about the list and where they can find us and all that let good stuff. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Well, thank you all for joining us each and every week. You could be anywhere, but you are here with us. Come on, get happy hour with Stevie D and myself, Judy Lou. And you can find us on Facebook at uh, Stevie D and his so-called friends. We post the episodes there as well, as well as all sorts of other comedic things that Stevie's doing. You can also find us if you listen to podcasts on Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Music, and all the other platforms, including Amazon Music. And if you are on the YouTubes where we started, we are still there on my channel. I am Judy Liu. Wherever you find us, we are so happy that you're joining us. Leave a comment, like it, share it, and subscribe. Love exciting and new. <laughs> All right. Best, we've done best TV theme songs, I think. I think. But anyway, if you can think of a good top 10 for next week, thanks to yeah. Judy for giving us all the info and being the brains behind the operation. Everybody, every Wednesday night, tell your friends, uh, find us on Facebook or social, uh, other platforms, uh, uh, Spotify. I'm glad we're on there and the other pl places now. So you can just be driving and laughing and uh, pay attention so you don't do a rollover like CJ. <laughs> but we'll see you next Wednesday, y'all. Come on, get happy hour. Thanks for watching. Rock the double wide. Yeah. Have a great week, everyone. You're in the mix with Judy Liu.